What's up, Cal Gang? All right, we got some uh, rotational kinematics problems here. All right, so this one is a uh, wheel is rotating around axis in the Z direction. Um, yep, yeah. and so yeah, let's just go ahead and draw a little picture for this. So here's you know what we got. Here's our wheel. It's rotating this way. I guess actually okay. So at the start, W is equal to um, let's see. So T is equal to zero. So W of zero is equal to negative six radians a second, and then W of seven is equal to um, four radians a second. So it goes from this negative, so it's spinning negative, and then it starts spinning positive. And it says uh, that we have a linear acceleration, or it says its uh, angular velocity increases linearly, which means that its acceleration is just gonna be like a regular number, just gonna be no, with no t's or anything thrown in. So it starts off, uh, what is the angular acceleration during this time interval, positive or negative? Okay, so we can figure that out. So angular acceleration is equal to the change in, uh, change in angular velocity over change in time. So we have all these values, right? So it's just gonna be W final minus W initial over change in time. Um, so what's that gonna be? So it's final time is four, or it's final speed is four, and then minus, but then it's gonna be negative six. And then all of that over, you know, changes to take seven seconds. So what that is is 10 over seven. So that means this acceleration is positive, and um, that's good. Uh, that makes sense. It's going from a negative velocity to a positive velocity. That means that it's accelerating positively. Okay, then what next? Um, what interval is the t speed increasing? Okay, so what we can do is we can just take this formula again, right? But what we're looking for is not the, t or we know the acceleration, and we know uh, what our final angular velocity is. We're trying to find when the angular velocity is equal to zero. So we're trying to find that. So then we just want to find how long it takes. So what we can do is we can move that delta t over, so it'll be delta t, times angular acceleration is equal to the change in angular velocity, then we can divide that angular velocity over. So delta t is equal to the change in angular velocity over acceleration, or angular acceleration. Okay, so what we're trying to find, so delta t is t final minus t initial, um, but t initial is equal to zero, right? We're starting at zero time. So change in velocity, so we're starting at negative six, but that's final. And we're trying to find when it hits zero. So it's gonna be zero minus negative six. This is where we're starting, or this is where we're trying to end, is when it's equal to zero. And then this is where we're starting. And it's angular is 10 over seven. So that means that t final is equal to six over 10 over seven. Uh, plug that into your calculator. And you get, um, 4.2 seconds is when it's negative. That's when its velocity, angular velocity is still negative. Okay, so then it wants to find when the angular velocity is positive. Um, so we know that it goes for seven seconds, and then we know that it's negative for that much time. So basically, you can say that the time that it's not negative is the time that it's positive. So if you take seven and subtract 4.2, you're gonna get a 2.8, right? That's the, that's, that's the second interval. So I guess you can write these as intervals, is it's, it's negative from uh, zero, t is greater than zero, but equal to 4.2, and then um, and then 4.2, if it's greater than 4.2, or you know, less than seven, I guess it's positive. So that's the interval from negative to positive. And what is the final question asking for? What is the angular displacement of the wheel at seven seconds? Okay. So we're gonna need another formula for this one. You can't just use the same thing again. Okay, so angular displacement is equal to, it's the same thing as linear displacement, just with angular velocity, angular acceleration. So one half angular acceleration t squared plus uh, angular velocity t plus initial uh, displacement. Okay, so what, is, what do we got here? Um, so we, we got, hold on, let me see. Okay, so times seven, we know acceleration. You got this one half. Um, and then this here is its initial uh, starting velocity, basically. So what we can do is plug that in. So theta is equal to one half. Acceleration is 10 over seven uh, t squared. Uh, but then t, we know that t is gonna be seven because that's how long we're looking for, seven squared. And then plus, but this is negative six because that's our starting velocity. 
negative 6, time, which is 7 again, and then this is 0. So you plug this whole thing into your calculator, and you're going to get theta is equal to negative, negative 7 radians, is how, how much it gets displaced from its starting point. Yeah, okay, so that's how you solve these kind of problems, guys. Uh, good luck on your physics homework. Calc gang.